a vibe. I think we'll get started. I know we're going to probably have some more people that are going to get uh, jump on here and we'll let them in. I have made you co host. So there we go. And he take it away, vibe. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for making it. Hope you've had your dinner, or if you've not, I will not keep you long. So uh, my name is Vibe. Uh, I have a very exotic Indian name, but Vibe is good enough for you to remember. Um, otherwise, we'll spend this entire evening memorizing my name. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy that we are working uh, with the Chamber this year for the travel program. And uh, interestingly, Chambers, uh, chambers offer these trips uh, for various reasons. Uh, one of the most popular reason is basically for definitely having fun and projecting the image of a chamber as a fun place to be, but also for any kind of cultural exchange. Also, it's like an off-site where they happen to travel with the community members and the chamber members um, and you know mingle with them in, in a wonderful place. And why not go to an international destination when it can come at the cost at which it is being promoted. So uh, the idea is just to have fun with the chamber, uh, have fun with your friends who can go along, bring in your family, bring in your friends, uh, make them avail the program, and most importantly, uh, learn something about new culture while you are being taken care of uh, by a very experienced uh, travel company, Aventura World. So uh, I represent Aventura World in the western part of uh, US and Canada. I'm currently based out of Vancouver, Canada. So, and uh, this is this is what my job is to to facilitate people to travel, to facilitate chambers, to organize cultural exchange and uh, cultural missions. Uh, some chambers also do business missions. I mean, why not? We can explore that too. But to begin with, we are doing this interesting trip to the southern part of Spain called as Spain and the Costa del Sol. And we're really excited about it. The trip departs on the 1st of November this year. And here we go. Okay, before we know about the trip, you definitely want to know who Aventura World is. So um, just as your chamber is in Sierra Vista, there is one master chamber kind of a thing called as the American Chamber. And most of the chambers are chapters, uh, regional or local chapters of the American Chamber of Commerce. And Aventura World is the official travel partner of the Association of Chambers of Commerce all across the US. Uh, we have been in this business since 1972. So next year, we are completing 50 years. Um, we have offices at various places. Um, we have two offices in US, one in San Diego and one in New Jersey. New Jersey happens to be the head office. Uh, we also have international offices, one in Paris, one in Rome, London, uh, New Delhi, and Cairo. Uh, we're also a member of the Sakara International Group. Now, basically, these are uh, big-time hoteliers and cruise boat owners uh, based out of uh, Rome, as well as Cairo. Uh, they have their cruise boats on the Nile River. Um, we are basically known as a wholesaler, uh, which means that we provide tremendous value and quality at the same time. And most importantly, we work dedicatedly with chambers and associations for their cultural missions. Uh, most importantly, with the changing times, we have also changed. We, have, we can call ourselves to be a very nimble company who adapted to the changes that kept on happening all through last year and even till today. Uh, we are also uh, you know, one of uh, the leaders in value price programs in USA, and my job here sitting in Canada is also to expand our footprint uh, north of the border. Well, the chamber has decided to go to Spain. Um, you must have received uh, the flyer that has this kind of a cover page. Uh, we will go through a day-by-day day day schedule of the trip. Uh, this session should not last more than one hour, to be honest. I'll be really I'll try to wrap it up quickly without keeping you for long. And if there are any questions, we'll take it towards the end. Uh, the session talks about the day-wise uh, activities. Uh, I will not give too, too much narrations about what happens each day because that I'll leave to you to explore while you are there. Uh, but I will actually just give you the routing and the significance of all the places that we have selected. Uh, what I'll also uh, touch base upon would be 
if there is any visa or travel requirements, uh, what is happening with the COVID situation right now, whether the travel is open or not. Uh, also uh, guide you through the booking process, availing the early bird discount, what all is covered in the early bird discount, uh, the cancel for any reason, insurance program that we have, as I mentioned, that we have changed with the time. So we have brought in the cancel for any reason insurance. So all those things we will be covering in this session. Uh, but the stress is definitely about on the significance of the trip, uh, about what all places have been chosen and why they are important to the region where we are visiting. So Spain is known for friendly people. Yes, they have a very kind of a laid back, slow lifestyle, especially in the south side of Spain in the Mediterranean coast. But they are very friendly people. They're very family oriented community a great folklore and tradition. A lot of the things that are closely associated with Spain, like the flamenco or the bullfight uh, and the music basically come from the region that we would be visiting. So they, they attribute to the global image of the country. Uh, great food. I mean, I, I can't uh, say that uh, the food isn't great. It is lovely. Uh, there's a lot of influence of the Mediterranean Sea. There's a lot of seafood in, uh, available in the region. A lot of fresh local produce, so amazing food choices in the re region for sure. And people over there love uh, community dining, community eating. So you will see that kind of a thing, a different shift in culture when you are there. A lovely historical sites. Uh, this whole area where we would be going, uh, this has a, a great geography, to be honest, very natural landscapes, cliffs, uh, meadows and, and uh, rivers also beaches so and then uh, there's a huge impact of history because once you see the location of, of that place on the map you will realize why it is historically significant because it was at a junction of of civilizations meeting each other it was uh, the roman civilization the arabian civilization the jews that came uh, to spain so it's, it's kind of uh, at at a very significant spot when it comes to the world geography <laughs> And yes, as I mentioned, sandy beaches, it is, it is at a very nice temperate uh, area, great uh, throughout the year. Definitely there are some winter months, but we are not going towards the extreme winters. That is somewhere in the month of February. So day one, uh, we depart from Spain. And now I would really, um, you know, before we get into the day-to-day -day thing, I would really mention that uh, take some time out and read through the uh, flyer and the itinerary. You would you would exactly find the keywords you would like to search for, or just just to have a glance over what all is included and what all uh, you would be uh, witnessing. Uh, is is there somebody who asked the question here? Okay, there's somebody in the chat. No, we're just posting the flyer so everyone can see it. Oh, okay, 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 perfect, perfect. Now, when I say day one, you depart and day two, you arrive in Spain, it does not mean that you would be flying for 48 hours. It's just that we are flying east. So uh, on the calendar, the date will change. Uh, but yeah, if you want, we can fly for 48 hours, not a problem. <laughs> You'll take the worst of the flight connections and we'll do that. But it's just we are flying east. So on the calendar, the date would change. And so don't, don't get scared. You, uh, you might wake up on the new date uh, when you arrive in Spain. Uh, we are taking a connection to a southern Spain town called as Malaga. And then from there, we'll take a small bus ride to our uh, beach destination called as Tormalines. So this is where Malaga is. And if you see, uh, this is the area that we are basically visiting, right from uh, the Rock of Gibraltar to Cordoba, Seville, Malaga. This is the Costa del Sol region uh, of, of Spain, as we call it. Uh, towards the end of the trip, there is a post-trip extension that is offered, and that's an optional extension if somebody has the time, money, and uh, the field to go. Uh, definitely, you can extend your trip for a couple of nights in Madrid. That's the cap capital. So in that case, you would be flying into Malaga and flying out of Madrid. Or if you're on just on the nine-day trip, you're flying into Malaga and flying out of Malaga. That's the only difference. And again, just another map or another graphic to show you where you are and what all significant places are there. If you see that little yellow blip over here, that's the tip of Africa. That's, that's the end of uh, Morocco over here. So you're very close to Northern Africa.
And yeah, welcome to Costa del Sol. So you are met uh, by Aventura World Tour Director. Now, this tour includes your flights, your uh, arrival, and trans uh, arrival and departure transfers, all your daily transport, all your daily sightseeing, a lot of your meals, and also all the guides, all the entrances, for all the things that have been mentioned as included in the tour. So apart from some meals and some optional tours, nothing has to be paid for, to be honest. Uh, also, um, if you notice the itinerary, you will see that you are staying continuously for seven nights at one place, at one spot, which is central to the geography of the region I showed you. This is uh, what we call as the cruise on land philosophy, whereby you check in once and you check out once. You unpack once and you pack up once. Uh, you don't have to worry about packing your bags and moving to a new location every day. The best thing is we go in different directions each day for our uh, tour activities and come back and relax at the same spot. And this is the standard uh, travel coach that we use. Some of the coaches are uh, 50 seaters, some of them are 45 seaters. It depends on uh, which one is available, which one has a, a lavatory on board. But uh, if it's not there, uh, you will have uh, pit stops for, for the same reason. Um, and because there are certain spots which are old and ancient in location, there would be some walk up uh, from the, the spot of parking, but it would not be too much of walking for people. So people with all kinds of abilities can be on this trip. And this is what uh, Tormolinos looks like. This is the main promenade. And towards the end of it at this, uh, this, this spot is where the, the hotel is that we use. And the picture has been taken from another hotel, which we use as a plan B hotel if, if we run out of space in this one. And this is what uh, the view from the hotel looks like. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful promenade. You can just go out and walk. You're not somewhere in the outskirts of the city. You just step down and you are in, in the main hustle bustle of the town. So once you reach uh, to Tormolinos, the evening is free. Uh, the dinner is included at the hotel. Uh, it basically allows you to get acclimatized to the place, take a walk, enjoy the views of, of, of the evening. Uh, as I mentioned, Spain has a very laid back lifestyle. And when it comes to southern part, southern part of Spain, it is furthermore laid back. Uh, the weather pattern is very much uh, like, I would say, Southern California or even warmer. Uh, so what, whatever you find in, in San Diego, it would be pretty much similar to that or even warmer in, in the month of November. Uh, great uh, water temperatures, you can take a plunge into the into the sea, not without any problems at all. Some um, street scenes from Tormolinos whilst, whilst you are taking your stroll. I'll just quickly run through some slides because they are the, because they are just pictures of the town that I want to show you. And uh, yeah, so the first evening you can relax, you can shop, you can try the wine, but it's, it's just more of an acclimatization day in, in my language, I would say, getting accustomed to the time zone change, the weather change and so on. And on day three, we start our touring and we start right on the very high point of going to Seville, which is known as one of the most romantic cities in the world. The pictures speak for <clears throat> itself. So on the map, we are going uh, northwest of Malaga. Uh, okay, here is Tormolinos, and we are going. We are going northwest towards. It. Okay, and uh, this this is this is like right in the center of all the action in this region. Uh, great great sights and great um, picturesque place to be honest. Um, it's Plaza de Espana and the Maria Luisa Park. We take a trip over there. And again, I'm always encouraging you to go through uh, the flyer, read through it. It will really help you understand how, how the trip will pan out. Uh, one of the important things about the trips that we plan with Chambers is uh, we try to have uh, the best of the guides that uh, become part of it, who can speak the language, who can walk the talk. And also we include something which we call as a cultural discovery series. So apart from seeing the sites or places of importance, we also do certain activities, certain interactions with the local community or local population, what we call as a cultural discovery series. 
and this is why it is Chambers Cultural Mission to Spain, you can call it that way, uh, which allows you to understand how local public live over there, what kind of professions they have, what kind of thinking they have, what kind of, it depends upon the conversations you strike with them, what kind of political uh, view they have or what sports they play and so on. So you can have those kind of casual conversations with them too. Again, browsing through some of the important pictures, these are the places that we would be seeing. I mean, amazing architecture and, and the way they have been uh, maintained is wonderful. Uh, this is one significant thing that you would see all through this region would be these blue and white tile works. And you will keep on seeing them again and again at many of the buildings that you come across. Uh, this is uh, because if we notice the map of the area, uh, because it was very close to Morocco, uh, the Arabian influence uh, came into Spain uh, through this region and this is what they brought with them. Again, as I was mentioning about the tiles, uh, there are spots where you can buy these uh, tiles as souvenirs. So uh, this would be a great piece of art that you can bring to your living room uh, for decorations. And we also go to the Santa Cruz district, which is a, one of the most pedestrian friendly places in the world, to be honest. And every, with every corner, every turn, you will see some very interesting things. And, and I will leave to the guides to narrate the stories to you. And the Cathedral of Seville. Uh, this is one thing I learned while I, I started uh, doing all these presentations and knowing about these trips is that most of the cities in Europe will have the cathedral right in the center of the town. And the city is ba city basically grew organically around it. Most of the cities were also by the banks of a river. So these are the two significant things that you will see in most classical towns in Europe that there's a cathedral in the center, the city is by the bank of a river, and that, that, that's two staple things that will always be there with, with the town. And everything, it's kind of the zero milestone of the city where everything is, all the distances are measured. So you can see different roads going in different directions from the cathedral. Okay, and uh, then, I mean, there's so many pictures. I mean, uh, it, it's just it's just a full day of touring on your day three. You will also notice that one day we do a lot of touring and then the next day we become a bit quieter. You will see on the day four. Towards the end of the day, we this is part one of the cultural discovery series. We go to the Flamenco Museum. A lot of people relate the dance uh, to Spain. It's like one of the major cultural identifiers of the country. Uh, this is where we get to interact with the artists, with the instructors, the students. We also get to know about the story, the history of, of the dance, how it has evolved, how things changed with uh, the dance going to South America, what kind of influence came from there, uh, and a lot of other things about the costumes, about uh, what, what different kinds of flamencos are there, uh, what is done and which season on for which reason or which festivities and so on. There's so much to know just about this particular dance form. Uh, day four, we go to England <laughs> or to UK. Uh, we go to the Rock of Gibraltar. Basically, this is part of, of the kingdom of the United Kingdom and also a very significant maritime uh, spot in the Mediterranean. It has a lot of history with uh, the maritime uh, trade and naval power of, of Europe in the medieval days. So this is where we are. We're almost towards the southernmost tip of mainland Europe in Gibraltar. And, and great views on the other side, if you see, that's Africa. Uh, you can actually see Africa to the other side. Uh, some people claim that Gibraltar rock, the most famous rock in the world. Australians would not, but <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, so yeah, but it definitely has a, a big maritime history, big naval history, uh, even uh, you know, discovery of, of uh, the, the sea route to America, it has some history with Gibraltar too. Uh, the Catalan Bay, uh, which is a small fishing village in Gibraltar towards the east side of the rock, we visit this area. And yeah, you would, you would see a lot of the macaque uh, monkeys in this area. So great, great 
pictures uh, for for your memories to be honest they would be posing they they're kind of accustomed to tourists coming over there and they just love posing for pictures please don't feed them yeah as i said it has a naval history so some artifacts from those times and this is what is called as the uh, southernmost point of gibraltar uh, the british uh, house of government and certain things that they have uh, posted over there you can enjoy your fish and chips in gibraltar and also the telephone booth from london they try to portray their culture over there on day five we have kept an optional tour and we can take you to africa on a speed boat to tangier so from uh, from gibraltar we take a speed boat and we go to tangier in north africa in morocco uh, to spend half a day of touring uh, in in the lovely town over there so uh, this was one of the important uh, points of connection between europe and north africa during the trading times of, of the Arab traders and, and the Roman traders. This is what Tangier looks like. Okay, now speedboat, uh, this is exactly one of the sample of the speedboats that go from Tangier to Spain. Um, it It is not a bumpy ride, but I would say it's not like a ferry ride that goes across different channels or islands. It goes really fast. So, uh, and, and it's just to save time and also because there's so many ships going on, so the ferries cannot be blocking the ways of the ship. So they have these big speed boats. So one has to be prepared for the ride. It, it is quite exciting to be honest, but I would say do not fill up yourself too much before taking this ride. Otherwise you might throw up. And again, uh, as an American passport holder, you don't need a visa to be in Morocco. You can just go there and they would, once you get off the speedboat, there would be a bit of immigration check because you have entered a new country. Um, it's totally a different culture altogether. You are not very much far away from Spain, but culturally it's, it's very different. It's very Arabic. And uh, the fortified walls of Tangier, again, a great naval history, a great uh, trading history. The old town, as we see, so you're in a completely different world. Um, and, and the markets and, and the things to buy from here. Interestingly, once you buy, a, buy some souvenirs from, from Morocco and come back to Spain, uh, do check if you have to pay any duty on it. So certain things might apply a duty and certain things might not. Uh, but any kind of things that you buy for your personal use, like clothing or rugs and stuff like that, would not invite any duty. But any handicrafts and art artifacts would invite that, but that's something that to be checked with the local people. And great food, great spice uh, markets and things to taste, it would be totally different from what you've seen in Spain altogether. And yeah, if somebody wants to take a camel ride on, on the beach, yes, they are free to do that. That's a wonderful thing to do uh, while you are in that um, Arabian influenced Morocco. Uh, day six, this is the, the most favorite part of mine in the entire itinerary, the Ronda tour. Uh, this is all, uh, this is a town which is all situated on high cliffs and with the river flowing right below it. So we are uh, here and uh, Ronda is here. So Tormolinos is here and Ronda is here. So we basically bypassed Ronda on the previous day to go to Seville. The next day we went in this direction. Now we are going to Ronda over here. The drive is really beautiful. You drive through beautiful pasture lands and meadows and, and reach this uh, cliffside town of Rwanda. Amazing architecture. I mean, it's mind boggling how they would have done that so many years ago. And this is the, uh, you know, the poster shot of, of the whole trip, which is the, the gorge and the, and the century bridge of the Punta Nevo. This is the bridge from the top but actually it's like very deep on the gorge. This is how it is. This is also a famous place for uh, the bullfighting culture in, in Spain. So we did start with the architecture culture in, in Seville. Now we are, we also saw the flamenco part of it. The second important cultural identifier of the country is bullfighting. 
So yeah, it's 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 an amazing place. Uh, bullfighting enthusiast, you will see uh, even Ernest Hemingway enjoyed the bullfighting uh, in this region, and and the and the architecture and the town planning is really amazing. It's it you can see a little bit of you know markers where the American um, town planners and architects stole the ideas of creating their houses, especially especially when you go to Arizona or or Southern California, and if you see the Mexican houses. They stole a lot of these ideas from uh, the Mediterranean construction style. Uh, the third uh, marker of Spain is the Spanish wine. So we also go to uh, visit a wine museum in Spain. So again, from the blue white tiles to uh, flamenco to bullfight, the fourth cultural marker I would bring in is, is Spanish wine. Spanish people think that their wine is better than the French wine, and obviously let the rivalry be there. Uh, the Argentinians would say that we have mastered it, and some other people would, the Chileans would say, okay, we we are better placed to do that. The Californians will have their own thing. And yeah, in British Columbia, we too have our good wine, cheap but good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Spanish wines are really nice, to be honest, uh, especially because of, of the weather in that region. It, it's and also, they take a lot of pride in their wine making. Sorry. Yeah. And you have the opportunity of exploring the town, enjoying a lunch by yourself. It's, it's again, a very pedestrian-friendly place. Almost all the towns in Europe, especially in, in the smaller towns, are so pedestrian-friendly. They are not very much horizontally spread, so they are very compact. You, go, you turn it anywhere and everywhere, you see something, some point of interest. Uh, day seven, we have kept as a day of leisure, but if you want, you can take the optional tour to Granada. And this is where Granada is. So uh, now this is when we are going towards the east from, from Termolinos. Uh, this is really famous for the Alhambra uh, castle. Uh, we have kept this as optional for two reasons. Number one, people do want their own free time because they've, never, they've not got the free time in the initial days. Secondly, Alhambra Castle, no matter how beautiful, no matter how enticing when you see the pictures over here, uh, it takes a lot of walking. Uh, the castle, the palace in itself is huge. There's a lot of cobblestones over there. So uh, if you are up for it, you can obviously take this optional tour, otherwise you can relax. So that's the reason we have kept it as an optional tour. And obviously it's towards the closing of the trip, people are tired. So they want to relax, but if if you can walk a distance of um, let's say uh, four to five miles on an undulated path kind of a thing, then this castle is. The next pictures will show you why it is so important. So this will also show you the uh, the uh, Muslim influence on southern part of Spain. The architecture will change. The carvings will change. Uh, the the important uh, structures will bear Arabic influence as soon as you get into the palace site. So you will not see the Roman influence of architecture or the Mediterranean influence, but you will see the Arabic influence in the construction of, of the buildings in Alhambra. So yeah, I mean, if you are really interested into these kind of places, do that. But yeah, there's a lot of up and down, there's a lot of cobblestone paths, some stairs to take and so on. So this is the Palace of Lands. And again, if you see, this whole influence has a very Arabic touch to it because of when the Arabs used to rule this area uh, in the 13th and the 14th century. And as I was mentioning about the lattice work and the tile work, this is the, uh, the important area where you see a, a very good specimen of that work. And yeah, I mean, I come from India, so I know the the uh, Muslim rulers really enjoyed making uh, gardens with canals and gar and water bodies and gardens all around it. So exactly the same thing that you will see over here. This is how it is. Now the Mihas tour uh, is part of the early bird tour. Uh, I will show where Mihas is. So Mihas is very close to Tormolinos. It's just a half an hour drive. Uh, 
when I say the early bird tour, on, right on the top of the flyer, you would see the early bird discount. So there is a $100 discount on the tour price, part one. And part two is this tour comes as free. This tour's value is actually $69. So if you reserve your spot by the early bird cutoff date, which is 28th of May, uh, you get this tour free and get the hundred and avail the hundred dollar discounts. So overall, a benefit of hundred and sixty nine dollars. Uh, reservation is based. I will get to the reservation uh, section later on. But reserving your spot does not mean paying in full for the tour. It is just paying the deposit of six hundred dollars. By doing that uh, transaction by twenty eighth of May, you are saving hundred dollars plus getting this tour for free. Otherwise, this day is absolutely uh, free for yourself. Uh, Mihas is a very little, quaint little idyllic town. Uh, people love keeping uh, the flower pots and the gardens, and, and the blue-white color will be very predominant wherever you go. So this is how the streets would look like. You can take a walking tour. The guide will take you through a lot of places. Uh, it's a very artsy town, a lot of, lot of artist shops, a lot of small souvenir shops. This is where... If you are going to buy some souvenirs, you might need some cash rather than card payments. We'll come to the currency part, but uh, a lot of those boutique shops which might not even deal with plastic money. But this is how the decor looks like of the place. And they're still using their old ways of transportation because big cars are not allowed or cannot fly within the street. Now, Malaga is very close to Tormelinos. Uh, there's no tour planned for it, but you can just take uh, a, an Uber uh, or a cab or a public transport to take a trip to Malaga. It's just a bigger town outside of uh, Tormelinos, or you can say the, the port or the airport town, which is not very historical compared to Tormelinos. But yes, it has uh, bigger markets or more uh, fancy stuff just, just to enjoy your dinner or something towards the end of the trip. Just relax. That's what this place is. That's what the Mediterranean region is for. Uh, if you're a golfer, uh, Tormelinos has a beautiful golf course uh, you can enjoy. And this is a stone's throw away from the hotel. So it's not very far from where we are staying. Yeah, you can always pick up your last minute souvenirs if you want to, uh, your flamenco dresses and uh, depart for depart the hotel for the airport on day nine for US. Now this is the conclusion of the main trip. However, there is an optional extension still left if somebody is going ahead with the Madrid extension. And again, we do these optional extensions for two reasons. Obviously, just the way for Alhambra, it was for physical ability. This one is for whether you have the leave and and the time, or if your pockets are further deeper to do that, or if you've not seen Madrid or you've seen Madrid and some other trip and you don't want to see it, so you can always skip it. So the, the, the trip includes uh, round trip air transportation from Phoenix. So you're flying out of Phoenix. It includes 14 meals, which includes all your uh, breakfast uh, and seven dinners. The lunches are not included. Your sightseeing is included, local guide and entrance fees is included full day tour of Seville, tour of Rwanda, and tour to the Rock of Gibraltar are also included. There are certain optional tours we discussed about those. Uh, the cultural discovery series, including the Flamenco Dance Museum and the wine production at the wine museum is included. Uh, all the deluxe motor coaches are included. Baggage handling is also included, uh, where people will help you in, in handling your baggage, putting it in the bus trunk and taking it out and even taking to your rooms. Uh, the price is when when you have the uh, the early bird discount is two thousand eight hundred and forty nine, uh, and if you book that by twenty eighth of May, you get the Miha tour for free. There's an additional tax of one hundred and fifty dollar on top of the price that you pay, but the fuel fuel surcharges are included. You can you have the opportunity of. Ex Extending your trip to Madrid. Uh, so if you extend your trip to Madrid, your trip will conclude on the 11th of November. 
Uh, you have two nights of stay, including two breakfasts. Your sightseeing, again, similar kind of inclusions of baggage handling and the deluxe mo motor coaches and tours and the sightseeing and then the entrances in Madrid. And the price is $5.99 uh, per person for double occupancy. And if you're a single occupancy, it's $8.98. So you take a small flight, even the regional flight from Malaga to Madrid is included in the price. And that's where Madrid is. So we start from Malaga over here and we take a, uh, I think it's a 45, 50 minute flight from Malaga to Madrid and we are in Madrid on the same day. Now this is the capital city. Now suddenly it will give you a shocker that from a, a, a lazy little town uh, on the Mediterranean, you are in a big metropolis. Uh, but we will be staying very much central in the city, so everything would be very much around you. All the action is all around you. The included part is the Madrid city tour, um, where we'll be seeing the Palace of Sibilis. Sorry, the Fountain of Sibilis. I mean, I love this thing. Uh, the Fountain of Neptune. I don't know why the Spanish people are making too many fountains, but they maybe they discovered that. And uh, the Alcala Gate. And beautiful views, to be honest. Uh, Plaza de Espana. I mean, just just keep counting things. <laughs> now, this is my favorite part uh, in Madrid. Uh, it's called as the Plaza Mayor. It's actually one of the oldest shopping malls in the world. So uh, there's a big square in center, and you can just sit here and, and spend hours to see the life go by. Uh, there are a lot of lots of high spec shops all around in this square. Uh, this is how it looks. And there would be some random performances of street performers happening. One good thing about going to any European city is if you finish your coffee or if you finish your meal without you asking for it, nobody would bring you your check. So you can keep occupying the table and keep sitting there. It's not as rude as in North America where the waiter, waiting staff is looking whether the plate is empty and let's get the check to the people. So. Yeah, you can you can just occupy the seat and enjoy the life go by around you. It's, it's this is one of my favorite spots in the town, to be honest. Am I using to be honest too much? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> okay, and we also have the modern Madrid tour. Uh, it's not only the classical part of it, but it's also the modern part of it. It's a great history to the city. Uh, again, so so many fountains. I don't know why the Spaniards are making so many fountains. Uh, we also have the visit to the Prado Museum and again, some last, last minute shopping. My recommendation would be the famous uh, hand fans uh, of Spain or the tiles that we initially talked about. You can pick some cheap leather items which look cheap, I mean, which cost cheap, but they don't look cheap and they're great, seriously great. Uh, or you can enjoy uh, the rose suckling pick at the Casa Botin. It's one of the most famous and quite an old ancient restaurant. Uh, do check with your local guide to make reservations for you. It is it is important to take a reservation, but it is highly recommended. It comes really well recommended. Well, just watch the world go by. This is this is my favorite part of the trip. So on day eleven, uh, we depart uh, the hotel. Uh, for the airport and you fly back home and you're back home on the same day depending upon your connection. So no visa uh, required for US citizens. The only two conditions you need to fulfill to visit Spain is uh, one is your passport should be valid for six months for, uh, after your departure date. So your departure date is 1st of November. You add six months to that, uh, which happens to be the 1st of May 2022. So if your passport is valid beyond 1st of May 2022 and it has minimum two blank pages, you are good to go. So th those are the only two conditions you need to fulfill. Okay, how do I sign up? Before I go to this part, I will explain something about the COVID travel uh, requirements. Uh, if you are vaccinated or about to get vaccinated, that's a great news because slowly and steadily, European Union is coming up with what they are calling as the travel passport uh, or the travel protocol for vaccinated people. 
uh, while you are getting vaccinated in U.S. or anywhere in the world, you are getting a proof as a document that you are vaccinated. Uh, you have been administered with the required amount of dosage and on what days that happened. Uh, this is what will be your proof for future that you have been inoculated with the COVID vaccine. Uh, Greece is running the pilot program of allowing uh, vaccinated travelers without any uh, COVID testing starting 14th of May. Looking at the success rate, what Greece achieves, other countries will follow. France happens to be next, and Spain is fifth in line from there. So they are testing one country after the other. Greece is the first one, followed by France, then Croatia, then Netherlands, and France happens to be the fifth one, where they would be allowing vaccinated passengers without any testing to be done. However, if I talk about the current scenario, you can still travel to Spain. All you need, if you travel, let's say tomorrow, not tomorrow, like two days from today, all you need would be a negative PCR COVID test done within 72 hours of departure. Once you arrive uh, in Spain, they will check that test and they will also do that testing once again at the airport. If you are found negative, you're free to go around in the city and come back. And once you're coming back, again, US will follow their own protocol of uh, re-entering uh, in the same fashion. But this thing is changing with each passing day. 20 days from today, Greece will come up with the no requirement of PCR testing for vaccinated passengers. And so looking at how it helps, uh, other, other countries will also follow the same pattern. If and ever uh, we uh, see that this, this particular thing is not working, so in the last one year and one month, we have learned a lesson how to manage these kind of scenarios. So it's, it's not something that happened to us last year. So ideally what we do is we reschedule the trip to a safer time so that uh, you can travel when it is safer, when it is allowed to travel to the country. That's option one. Option two is you, as I will take you through the cancel for any reason uh, insurance, you can use your cancellation over there. And last but not the least, uh, if we get to know much earlier, if we have ample time, if we get to know four months or before, which is 121 days before the departure date that we are not traveling to Spain, you can cancel your trip and we'll give you all the money back, no questions asked. So, so the step one is if, it is, if we get to know that much far before, uh, you have the opportunity of canceling the trip 121 days before departure, no questions asked. Otherwise, you can avail the cancel for any reason insurance, where 65% of the money is refunded even up to 48 hours before departure. And the 35% is retained as a travel credit for future trips. Also, uh, if, if you don't want either of the options, we can just opt for a reschedule to a new date. So that's the part three of it. So in any case, it is a benefit to the passenger of either the money secure or used as a credit for a future trip. Now let's go to the sign up part. So there are two ways of signing up. The old school way is the paper form and the new way is the online booking link. My recommendation is always to go with the paper form because then you can track your booking very easily. Stop it. Okay. Uh, paper form uh, is part of the flyer that you would have received. You can download it. It was part of the chat over here. Uh, for each passenger, you need one copy of the form. You fill up your name exactly as the way it is in your passport, the date of birth, uh, the country of issue, and so on. Uh, you check the boxes of the things that you are uh, taking. If you are taking the Mihas tour and it is within May 28th, you still check yes, but you will not be charged for it because it is free. Uh, you do your little calculations over here where you, if you are booking before 28th May, this is the column you follow. If you're booking after 28th May, this is the column you follow. You do the total and you select the uh, insurance. So if you see the regular insurance is cheaper, the premium insurance is costlier, but then it covers you up until 48 hours before departure. So that's the only difference. But I'll be uh, very truthful in saying that insurance is not obligatory. It is optional. 
you can take it from us. We offer through our partners called as CSA generally. If you if you have any other preferred insurance provider, you can check and compare the insurance. I will share a link with the chamber about the insurance that we are offering, or I can share the link right away in the chat uh, while we are on. Uh, and uh, you can compare what your local AAA is offering or any other insurance company is offering, or even your credit card company offers you if you pay through a credit card. But this is something that I would really appreciate that everybody takes, either from us or from anybody else, but you should have an insurance on your travel. And this is the cancellation policy I was mentioning. If you cancel within 121 days or prior, the cost of trip of cancellation is given with no questions asked, to be honest. Yeah. And then we have the, okay, there you are. That's the insurance uh, policy that we have. So, if you are if you're buying the cancel for any reason plan, you have a coverage of the standard plan and uh, cancellation of up to 65% is refunded up until 48 hours and the rest is offered as a credit to you for future use. The insurance usually covers trip cancellation due to accident, sickness or death in your immediate family as we call as next of kin. Uh, medical issues on the trip, trip interruption, travel delay, missed connections, emergency, medical evacuation, lost baggage and personal effects and baggage delay. You can go to our website, you will find the insurance document uh, to be downloaded from there. It's, it's very easy. If you have very specific questions about insurance uh, on the document, you will find the toll free number of CSA generally and you can note the tour code. The tour code is G-T-O-U-R-02, and they will be able to help you with insurance-specific questions because I'm not a licensed insurance agent to, to discuss insurance with you, what is applicable to you. Otherwise, the, the option two is by booking online. So if you see, there is a link over here, and the booking code is UIDM28. We go to the link where you create your login ID for once, and I would really appreciate if everybody uses this method because that allows you to log in and check for your booking, for your invoices. It also helps the chamber in keeping track of things for you. Uh, you could just create a uh, login ID for once, and then you come to this page where you enter the booking code that was mentioned on the flyer, and you enter your dedicated booking page of the chamber. You can download the brochure from here also. There are six small screens. There's not much to be filled. You fill your name, email exactly the way it was in the form, but in different uh, sections. The best part is the computer will do all the calculations for you. You don't have to do the math as you were supposed to do on the form. And uh, you submit it. You get a notification of your payment. You can also download your invoice right away from here. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you want to book for the trip, the deposit is $600 plus the insurance amount that you pay. The insurance is paid in full upfront. <clears throat> so uh, if you pay the $600 deposit by the 28th of, uh, of May this year, you get the $100 off and the free Miha store, else the tour becomes 2949 and the Mihas tour uh, becomes uh, paid. So any questions for me, you want me to run through any slide specific uh, to the session, I'm here. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think you have wet all of our appetites here and uh, <laughs> we're excited to travel. Um, does anybody have questions? I kind of put everybody on mute while he was speaking. So if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute and ask your question. What is the cost for single? I didn't, couldn't get it up on the screen. Uh, okay, I will pull that up. So, so if you are traveling single, uh, the, the additional cost is $5.99. Okay. About, okay. Over and above the tour price. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to bring that uh, link so everybody has it. I'm 
post, putting this link in the chat, but I will email this uh, to the chamber. That should not be a problem. Okay. If there are any tours that um, you decide that you aren't up to going on for sickness or whatever reasons, is that acceptable? Yeah. Uh, now, if you notice, I did mention that we are staying in one hotel throughout the trip. And let's say you are too tired or you don't want to wake up early in the morning and you don't want to go. The best part is all your group will come back to you in the evening. You will not be missing them out. Okay. Right. So uh, in a tour where you are checking out and moving ahead, even if you're not feeling great, you will still have to be with them because you have to check in at the next spot at least. But here, everybody's coming back in the evening and you, you will still find them this evening. Is there any handicapped accessibility? Uh, no, ma'am. For two reasons. Uh, for handicap accessibility, the, the vehicle has to be specialized. And secondly, a lot of these places are quite old with cobblestone. So if it's a handicap accessibility tour, it has to be a separately designed tour. It cannot be with a group then. Okay. And is there any currency change? Okay. Yeah, I think I missed out on that part. So in, in Europe, the currency is euros. Uh, the conversion rate is uh, for one US dollar, you get 0.85 euros. But obviously, that's a dynamic thing. Right? It keeps on changing. As of, as of today, it's 0.88. So if you give one dollar, you get 88 euro cents back. Or if you give one euro, you get uh, one dollar and 12 cents back. Uh, now, most of the places, if there are decent sized shops or uh, showrooms or restaurants, you can pay by your card, uh, your American credit card or debit card, the way you want to pay it. Uh, but for smaller vendors, street vendors, for tipping and stuff, you can get currency exchange. My recommendation would be to get the currency exchange in Spain for two reasons. Number one is, uh, you can carry some US dollars. It's absolutely fine to carry some US dollars up until $10,000 in cash uh, and get it changed when, when and whenever you need it rather than getting it changed up front. So if you feel the need of it, you can ask your guide and, and he or she would help you in getting it changed uh, so that you don't change it. And again, then you overdo it and again, want to do it back into US dollars. That's first part. And the second part is if you get the money changed here in, in United States, you might only get the higher denomination currency, the 100 euro bills or the 50 euro bills, which are not very much useful. Once you get the currency changed over there, you can ask for the five euros or the coins and that you have a mixed bunch of denominations. So it's just a smart way of doing it. If you are uh, if you're carrying your American cards and some of the card, card companies are like that, just just give them a call that you're doing an international trip so that in many cases, uh, cards get blocked after first transaction uh, outside the country. So just let them know that you are traveling abroad so that the card does not get blocked or you don't face any problems. Uh, there are also preloaded currency cards that you can buy in US where you can load, uh, you can pay in dollars but get euros loaded on them and you can use that too. Even in Gibraltar, don't worry, you don't have to have British pounds, you can use euros. But carrying US dollars is great because you might want to shop something in Morocco and you can buy at US dollars. So US dollars is always good to carry. Um, yeah, but for tipping, I would say it's absolutely your choice the way you want to tip somebody. Uh, my recommendation is if you find the food great, if you find the service great, you can tip the way you, you tip exactly in US. Uh, towards the end of the trip, if you want to tip the guide or the bus driver, uh, the best recommendation is to pull in all your tips and give them so that it looks like a sizable amount to them. And it's not a, it's not a burden on each one of you to give too much. Thank you for your questions, everyone, Brenda, great questions. Appreciate that. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for him? We are recording this so that we can have this available for other people to watch. But any other questions from our folks out there? Not currently, I think. I think you've answered all of okay. our questions. Yeah, I shared the link for an uh, insurance document on the chat if Angela has taken that down. 
Uh, you can circulate it. Uh, it's it's basically for people to know what is covered. If they want to make a call and understand, uh, they can do that. And it's also for them to uh, compare it with anything else they are getting out in the market. Well, so far, everybody I, I we've seriously... talked to has been quite impressed with the price and what comes with that, yeah, including the airfare. It's, it's, it's a good deal. <laughs> so we're excited about it. We ha it looks like we have a lot of people really scribbling notes right now. <laughs> are you sure there's no more questions out there that we can answer for you right now? By we, I uh, mean my recommendation. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mel Melanie, my recommendation for any future questions or anything anywhere where, where you get stuck while booking is to direct your questions to the chamber for two reasons, uh, Angela might have the answer because of the these are mostly faqs but if it's a unique question angela you're please you can always ring me anytime and i will be happy to answer and uh, if you don't receive your invoices immediately it's maybe because uh, the processing might take the the back end is just running uh, on its own but you will see it if you don't see it in two working days then it's it's an alarm that something has happened and do let us know very good. Thank you. I think you made it at an hour. 658. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So anybody who's interested, just make sure you get in contact with Angela if you have questions. And uh, if not, we invite you to go ahead and click the link and register. And we're excited. But again, even if you register and you still have questions after that, please make sure you get a hold of us and and we'll walk you through the process. But we really hope that this will become a yearly deal that we do and a new location every year. And we're excited about it and hope that we can all make new friends on the trip this year that we'll meet up with next year. Yeah. And the year uh, after. One last thought. Sorry, one last thought. If you have any friends or family who are not located close to Phoenix, but elsewhere in US and they still want to be on this trip, uh, we can offer a price from a different major gateway. If they are in, in California or even if in, in the East Coast, we can offer a price to them because as I said, it's only dedicatedly for chambers. So there would be some chamber who would be traveling uh, from, that, from that gateway and they can join it. So you can always reach out to your friends and family elsewhere also and we'll give the price, not a problem. Yeah, I think that's great. So they can still sign up through here, but uh, they can fly out of somewhere else and meet you there. Yeah. So yeah, friends, yeah. family, wherever. All right, Angela. Um, and we did have somebody ask why, but I just wanted to be clear for the room. You, as you get in to register, you can actually purchase just the land version, not the, the flying in version, because we have a couple of people that are interested in meeting us in Spain and then going to Italy or doing something else afterwards. So that is an option, isn't it, Vibe? There is an option. We have to do it separately. But if you also realize that all the people who arrive together are picked together from the airport. Noted. Now, yes. If they are not if they are not flying with us, which means they have to make their own way to the hotel and again back to the airport while they conclude the tour. No, so it's not right. just it's not just excluding the flight, but also being picked and dropped from the airport. Otherwise, okay. they can be part of it. Fair but then enough. I would really recommend them not doing the online registration, doing the paper registration, and putting a note that they want it. So that will do the okay. exception. Okay. Good. Good to know. Very good. Well, thank you all for being here with us tonight. We're excited to host our first trip this year and, and hopefully from here on out. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, like I said, give us a call here and uh, talk with Angela. Thank you, Vibe. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye.